All we're gonna do is add the asterisk to God. So all the capitalized measures got. So we're gonna it's gonna be consistent across the board. And watch what happens. God plus Father plus Jesus plus Christ. Welcome to episode 7, the last episode of the Macro Pattern series, where we're going to be going over the most extraordinary series of patterns that I know about, at least, that exists in the King James Bible. This is the episode to watch. This is the one that you should not miss. This is the final result, if you will. And we're going to be taking a lot of the major patterns from previous episodes and stacking them up on top of each other in this one so we can really see how this all shapes together into one book. All of these coincidences, anomalies. Okay, so this is God Almighty in the King James Bible. Okay, so we're going to start off uh, in the bottom here towards the, um, well, in the Old Testament. And we're going to start off in the first seven books. So in the first seven books, that's from Genesis to the book of Judges, we have 777 verses that mention God with or without the apostrophe S. And those are all capitalized mentions. In this episode, we're only looking at pure mentions. If we were to try to put raw mentions into this episode, there'd be no way. The, the chart is already pretty big, as you're going to see. But we're just looking at pure mentions. And if you're new to that, that simply means pure versus raw. Pure means we're getting rid of everything, like all the lowercase mentions of God, basically. Um, and if we're looking at Jesus, we're getting rid of all the people who are named Jesus, but it's not talking about Jesus Christ. With pure mentions, we're only looking at the count, the number of times that shows up for that particular person or entity we're talking about. When it comes to raw mentions, which we're not doing in this episode, we would include all of it. And we're just looking at the text of the scripture itself without excluding anything. So these are pure mentions. Okay, so in the first seven books, there are 777 verses that mention God. Uh, when you see the, that three-letter word, capital G-O-D, or with the apostrophe S. Okay, and then if you were to include all the uppercase mentions of God in that count, you would get uh, 28 times 28 verses in the first seven books. So it's T7 times T7. Basically 28 equals, if you think of like a bowling alley, if you ever go on bowling, you have the pins like one, two, three, four, that equals 10 pins. So if you were to do that seven rows deep, you would end up with 28 pins. One plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven. Okay, so T7 times T7 verses in the first seven books, if you were to include every single mention of God or gods. Okay, so that's just kind of a, we didn't, I didn't really need to put that in there compared to what we're going to be seeing today, but uh, just to kind of work our way into this. Uh, in the book of Psalms, which is in the heart of the Bible, where you're dealing with prophecy, you're dealing with worship. Psalms is one of my favorite books, and um, Psalms has 70 times 7 mentions of Lord and God. Now, this is when Lord is with the capital L and not including the all uppercase uh, L-O. So this one would be referring to Adonai. And if you were to see it with every single letter capitalized, which we'll see in a second here, whereas O-R-D is also capitalized, it would be referring to Jehovah. So if you look at uh, Lord Adonai plus God, Elohim, you're looking at 70 times 7 mentions in the book of Psalms of uh, those two words combined. So 70 times 7 has two connections in the Bible. First of all, it's related to Daniel 70 weeks. So 70 times 7 uh, that God gave um, to... Uh, Daniel in chapter 9 of the book of Daniel, which is also, by the way, interestingly, was uh, that event when Daniel had that vision. Um, is he specifically says what year it happened in. It's like the first year. Uh, if you look in the beginning of that chapter of Daniel 9, if you look that up in history, that's uh, 539 BC, which is 77 times 7, which is kind of interesting. I don't know if there's anything to that or not, but sorry, I'm already getting sidetracked. We can't get too sidetracked here. We got to keep going with this episode. Okay, so there's a lot to cover. Um, in the book of Psalms, if you just look at um, all mentions of Lord, when it's talking about Jehovah or Adonai, so Lord or Lord, you're looking at 777 mentions in the book of Psalms. By the way, that's the uh, Lord is the last word of Psalms. 
And the word blessed or blessed is the first word of Psalms. So if you look at blessed in the Psalms, you get seven times seven mentions. And if you look at the last word of Psalms, you get 777 mentions when you look at this pattern in the verse text. Okay, so anyways, let's just keep going here. Um, this is going to get uh, deep pretty quickly. Okay, so in the Gospels, I briefly covered this in the first episode, but let's just go through this again. So we're looking at all the pure mentions of God and Father in the Gospels. Now we're looking at the singular mentions, so we're not including the posture VS, and we're looking at uh, the one time that it's conjoined. Because if you were to just look up God plus Father in the Gospels for their capitalized mentions, first of all, you have an anti-mention of Father in Luke 16, verse 24, I believe it is, with Father Abraham, which is not referring to God the Father. Okay, so um, second of all, there is a time in the Gospels where you have God the Father uh, in John chapter 6, I think it's verse number 27, where it says, For him hath God the Father sealed. So there's one time that happens in the Gospels. So if you were to count that God the Father as one mention instead of two, and we're going to see patterns, by the way, that go both ways. So no matter which way you try to go, it's, uh, it's relentless, the amount of patterns that exist. Okay, so, But if you can join God and Father together, or God the Father together as one mention, in that time in John 6, 27, there's no other places in the Gospels where that God the Father occurs, you would get 490 mentions, which is 70 times 7. Okay, so again, now 70 times 7, I gave you the first one. I forgot to give you the second one. So the first one is Daniel 70 weeks. The second time in the Bible is when Peter is asking Jesus, how many times do I forgive my brother? And that's in Matthew 18, 22. We've covered that many times in this series, so I'm just going to say it. Uh, Jesus says, not until seven times, but until 70 times seven. That's how many times we are to forgive our brothers. So that number, according to Jesus, and even if you look in Daniel chapter 9, in the context of the 70 weeks, this number is directly associated with the complete forgiveness of sins, according to the mind of God, according to the, the mind of Christ. Okay, so we have um, 70 times seven mentions of God and Father in the Gospels. Okay, so if we're going to keep going upward here. So we already saw this one in episode one as well. I believe this was the first pattern we actually showed in this macro pattern series, where we have father and son in the Gospels showing up a combined seven times seven times seven times. So 343 mentions of father and son. Uh, and father there, of course, this these two patterns are interlocked because you have father here, in this pattern and father down here in that pattern which means that word father capitalized pure mentions is perfectly interlocked into two different patterns and a lot more as we're going to see here in a second so in the gospels uh, i think i mentioned this as well in the extra notes of episode one if you look at all the mentions of father or fathers with the apostrophe s and all mentions of Son, capitalize, all mentions of Jesus. And again, this is pure. Um, now, by the way, when it comes to uh, Son, there are no apostrophe yes mentions of Son in the King James Bible, anywhere at all in the text. So there is no such thing as a capitalized Son with the apostrophe yes, which is why I don't have it there. Um, so in case that looks like it's trying to be manipulated, it's not. It's consistent across the board. We're including all mentions of Father, Son, and Jesus in the Gospels. And we're getting a total of 980 mentions. Now, of course, now that you have seen episode 4, possibly, if, you're, if you've seen the other episodes, you know that that's how many times Jesus himself shows up in the entire Bible. So, all the way from Matthew to Revelation, if you were to count how many times Jesus shows up, there's no times where he's mentioned in the Old Testament. Jesus shows up 980 times in the entire Bible, which is 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7. By the way, if you want to fact check any of this, if you want Bible software screenshot proof uh, with the search file that you can download, uh, get the program called King James Pure Bible Search. And if you go to uh, this website address, kjbcode.de slash almighty, you're going to be able to check all the screenshots and verify yourself that all of these are factually accurate, that you can yourself put on your own computer screen 
and you, you can we have screenshots on the website as well so you can either just look at the website itself without having to download anything or you can do the the work of downloading it yourself and checking yourself and you can see there we have where all the anti mentions are, are listed in the Bible and you can see how we're getting these counts these are all real counts that exist in the most printed Bible in history okay so What's amazing about this is that we have all the mentions of Jesus in the Gospels showing up a combined 980 times with Father and Son, which is the exact amount of times he shows up in the entire Bible. So how does that happen by accident? Well, this is just a very small piece of what we're going to see today. Okay, so in the Gospels, if you look up all the mentions of God... Father, Lord, and Christ, you get 777 pure mentions in the Gospels. And if you look up all the mentions of Father and Lord, there are 7 times 7 times 7 verses that mention either Father or Lord capitalized. And lastly, in the Gospels, we're getting close to our title here, we might need to hide that. Um, if you look up all mentions of Lord, God, Father, Son, Jesus, and Christ, which all of those words perfectly go together, when it comes to Lord and God, those words go perfectly together in the Bible because God calls himself the Lord God. So Lord, God, Father, Son go together, Father and Son, and Jesus and Christ. So all of these, it's basically like three pairs of, three perfect pairs, all these things going perfectly together. And you get a combined 777 plus 777 mentions in the Gospels. Okay, so there's actually two ways to do this. The first way is to not include the apostrophe yes uh, with Father and just count them all normally. So Lord, God, Father, and Son, Jesus and Christ. And that would give you the, the Father and Son um, 7 times 7 times 7 pair. Okay, so you could do it like that, where you're kind of looking at it from the logic of we're... You know, th this is a perfect pattern stacking on top of other patterns or with other words. However, if you also do the conjoin method, as we saw with the God and the Father, so God the Father conjoined, if you look at all the conjoined mentions of these words in the Gospels, so God the Father, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, Christ the Lord, Lord's Christ, Lord God, and Lord Jesus, you get a total of, uh, well, there's a total of 12 well, 24 if you were to count them individually, right? So God, one, Father, two, Jesus, uh, three, and Christ, four, and then five times over. But if you were just to conjoin these, you would reduce it down to 12, and you would get uh, a perfect 777 plus 777 mentions. So it's perfect in two different ways. Okay, so that's in the Gospels. Now we're going to look at, well, before I go on, let me also emphasize 777 plus 777 is how many times Jesus and Christ show up in the entire Bible. And again, with uh, same thing with the word son. There are no mentions of Christ's with apostrophe S in the Gospels. There are in the epistles, but not in the Gospels. So here, this entire search is also consistent. And you're looking at all mentions of Jesus and Christ in that search. And that's how many times Jesus and Christ shows up in the entire Bible, which in itself is maddening, which is just crazy, it's astonishing, I should say, because that means Jesus and Christ average out to 777 mentions each, which again, if you are not familiar, if you've never read the Bible before, I kind of miss to cover this sometimes, but uh, in my brain it's common sense, but I shouldn't think of it as common sense because I know not everybody's read the Bible, but God's perfect number all throughout the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, is seven. It just goes throughout the entire Bible, especially in Genesis, especially in Revelation, especially in Leviticus. Like, if you just read throughout the scriptures, you're going to see that number show up all over the place. Uh, and that's because it's God's number of perfection. Um, so in the New Testament, you have Jesus and Christ showing up 777 plus 777 times. And I have a verse here that says, For other foundation can no man lay then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. 
And when it comes to looking at patterns in the Bible, um, I'm gonna at the end of this episode, I'm gonna show a quick, what I'm calling the golden sequence. It's like a trilogy of three patterns, where anybody who sees that is just like, how like you if you're being honest with yourself, how does it perfectly happen like that? But the first two patterns of that sequence are right here with Jesus showing up a perfect amount of times with just his name by itself. And then you have Jesus and Christ showing up perfectly. There's a third layer. There's a, there's a third pattern to the golden sequence where it, it adds on top of Jesus and Christ and you will not believe your eyes. That's going to be at the end of the episode. So, so watch out for that when we get to the end. And then, um, like I said, I'll try to go over, go over that golden sequence again. But basically, if you look at all the mentions of Jesus, which again is 980, and all the mentions of Christ, it's 574. That's including Christ or with the apostrophe S or Christ inside of the word Christians because Christian is a follower of Christ. Okay, so that's how many times his name shows up in the entire Bible. 777 plus 777 times. Okay, so that's just amazing to me how that shows up <laughs> a, a portion of those, a portion of these 777 plus 777 mentions is showing up in the Gospels and producing that exact same number with Lord, God, Father, and Son. Oh man, that is so hard to believe. That is so amazing. Okay, so, okay, let's go to down here to the Gospels and Acts, which will represent the historical side of the New Testament. So in the Gospels, it's all narrative, historical, but that narrative continues into the book of Acts. Um, and then it gets into the epistles, which are letters that are written from Paul to the churches and to individuals. But here in, um, in the narrative portion of the Old Testament, I mean, of, of the New Testament, we have all mentions of God. And now I don't have it here, but this is also including the all uppercase mention of God. So God or God just capitalized or God with the apostrophe yes. It yields 490 mentions in the narrative, 70 times 7 mentions. And I have here in this little note that says includes uppercase. Um, so interestingly, if you look up all mentions of Lord and Son, you get 70 times time 7 mentions as well in the exact same scope. Which means if you put that all together, if you put Lord and God and Son together, and again, there's no apostrophe S mentions of Son, so this is all consistent you will end up with 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7 or 980 mentions of Lord God and Son in the, the first five books in the narrative of the New Testament. Which again, 980 is the same amount of times as Jesus in the entire Bible. All right. Now in the epistles. In all of the epistles, the exact same search phrase right here. God, with the apostrophe S, produces 777 mentions from Romans all the way to Jude. So Revelation is the apocalypse, uh, we're dealing with prophecy. The epistles written to the churches, written to uh, the church, uh, members, of that, members of the church. We have 777 mentions of God without the apostrophe. But that's not it, because there's also... 343 mentions of Lord, which is 7 times 7 times 7. So Lord and God both show up perfectly in the epistles. And I don't emphasize the epistles enough on my channel, but the epistles is where you're going to find God and, and the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And it's the most important place for a Christian to be in their walk with Christ. You must be in the epistles. Because this is, that's where we get our doctrine from. That's where the doctrine of Christ is found. So it's actually kind of you know, <laughs> terrifying in a, in a holy type of way to see how God and the presence of God is so perfectly embedded into the epistles. And it even goes further than that because if you just look in Pauline epistles and all of the epistles that Paul wrote, you get... 777 
plus 777 mentions of God, Lord, Jesus, and Christ. So that's looking at the singular mentions. So it's interweaving through both of these patterns, and it's not even including the apostrophe S mentions. And then it's just adding Jesus and Christ, and you're getting 777 plus 777 in Paul's epistles. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. He is the main apostle we are re supposed to read and follow today. Okay, so even more on top of all that, in the epistles, if you were to look at all the verses that contain both Lord, which is mentioned seven times, seven times, seven times in the epistles, or, or sorry, and God, which is mentioned 777 times in the epistles, there are exactly 77 verses that contain both of them, both of those words. Which is just, I mean, putting that all together in the most, like in the part of the Bible where the, the Spirit of the Lord is like literally there, teaching you and instructing you for the church age. That is, that's hard to fathom how on top of what we have in the Gospels, this is all happening by random chance. Uh, I know there's going to be people who say it is, but I don't think they're being honest with themselves when they look at all this. So in the last chapter of the Bible, <clears throat> so in Revelation chapter 22, very last chapter, God is mentioned seven times in that chapter. And he's also, the ver first mention of God in that chapter, which is this little note down here, it's the 21st word. So the 21st word of the last chapter of the Bible is God, first mention of God in that chapter. It's just seven plus seven plus seven. And that mention of God is the 77th letter, or the letter G, capital G, is the 77th letter of Revelation 22. Um, furthermore, uh, God is mentioned seven times in Revelation 7, so the seventh chapter of Revelation, as well as seven times in the seventh chapter from the end of Revelation. So Revelation 16 is the seventh chapter from the end of Revelation, God is mentioned seven times in Revelation 16 as well. <clears throat> okay. Now, when you look in the last seven chapters of Revelation, there are seven times seven mentions of God and Jesus. Forty-nine mentions of God and Jesus in the last seven chapters of the Bible. And by the way, I put this asterisk here. That basically means the same thing as the, the apostrophe S. Yes. Uh, or it could be anything else that follows afterwards. But in this case, in Revelation, it's just uh, dealing with... Um, there is no mention of God with the apostrophe S or Jesus with the apostrophe S uh, in Revelation. Um, so also interesting to know is God is the seventh word of Revelation, and then Jesus is the seventh word from the end of Revelation. There are exactly seven verses in Revelation that contain both Jesus and God, and they're in the same verse. And there are exactly seven chapters in Revelation that contain both Jesus and God when they're both in the same chapter. So, perfectly interlocked in the book of Revelation. In the first and last books of the Bible, there are seven times seven times seven mentions of God and Jesus. Now, by the way, this can actually work two different ways, and I never recognized this before. But... Normally, what I would show is God plus Jesus without these little stars, so without the apostrophe S. But if you um, include that, if you include the apostrophe S and you just uh, hit case sensitive, um, it's going to give you the same count, 343 mentions. So, real quickly, I can just show you what I mean by that. So, if we just go to Genesis and Revelation, and we just type in God and Jesus, we get 343 mentions, or seven times seven times seven mentions. Uh, you can see 230 mentions in Genesis and 113 in Revelation. But if we were to select case sensitive for both of these and add the asterisk for both of them, we would get the same count because it's looking at the apostrophe S version of God instead of uh, all the uppercase mentions of God. So that's interesting how that also works both ways. Um, and you can look at, through them as well if you have the software. But anyways, so if we zoom all the way out here, we can see that in the purple we have in Genesis, which is represented by the first book here. Sorry, this is not to scale with the Old Testament. We are, <laughs> this is not how the Bible is uh, uh, laid out. It's actually the opposite of this, where the Old Testament is way bigger than the New Testament. But 
for the sake of emphasizing patterns revolving around Jesus Christ, the New Testament, we need to focus in on the New Testament. So anyways, we have uh, in Genesis and in Revelation, God and Jesus showing up seven times, seven times, seven times. Now, interestingly, also in the exact same scope, Genesis and Revelation, if you look up all the mentions of Lord, referring to Jehovah, and all mentions of God, you're looking at exactly 490 mentions, 70 times 7, which again links back. When it comes to the book of Revelation, I would make more of the connection with the, the Daniel 9, 70 times 7, versus the 70 times 7 that Jesus um, that Jesus speaks. However, I mean, it depends on what part of Revelation you're in, right? Okay, so uh, in the first seven books of each testament, so the first seven books of the Old Testament and the first seven books of the New Testament, there are seven times seven times seven times seven mentions of God and Jesus. And that's with that case sensitive checked that I just showed you on Pure Bible Search. So we're looking from Genesis to Judges, and then from Matthew to 1 Corinthians. Those are the first seven books of each testament. And it's giving us a perfect 2,401 mentions. Seven times seven times seven times seven, or seven to the fourth power. Okay, now I'm going to zoom way out for this one. This is dealing with the first seven and the last seven books of both testaments. So this was the first seven books of each testament. Now we're going to look at the first seven of the Old Testament, the last seven of the Old Testament, the first seven of the New Testament, and the last seven books of the New Testament. So when you do that, you get a total, when you look at the words God, Son, and Jesus, again, we're dealing with pure mentions, you get 980 times three mentions, which again, 980 is 70 times seven times two, or how many times Jesus shows up in the Bible. So you get 980 times three mentions in seven times seven times seven times seven verses of God, Son, and Jesus in the first and last seven books of both Testaments. And that is not even close to what we're going to be seeing today. All right. Also, if you look in the same scope, if you look up at all the uppercase mentions of Lord, so Lord, God, Jehovah, I am, and Jah, and that's all the uppercase mentions of God the Father. And then we have uh, all mentions of God, Jesus, and Christ. There are 777 times 7 mentions in the first 7 and last 7 books of each testament. Okay, so we have a pretty big stack so far, but this is going to get uh, pretty tall. Okay, so actually before we go up, I have uh, a note down here about Jehovah. So in case you did not know this, the name of God is Jehovah. And Jehovah, the word itself, the, his name itself, shows up exactly seven times in the King James Bible. Now, when people tell me that this could have been possibly a conspiracy of man that all this happened, the King James translators um, somehow interwove all of this into the text. The only, time, the only thing I think of is, well, maybe they did that for Jehovah. <laughs> maybe they put Jehovah in exactly seven times. But I don't, I don't think they went beyond that into all of this. Um, I think that would uh, defy uh, all reason. Okay, so um, Psalm eighty-three, eighteen says that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah. See how it's all spelled out there in the text. That happens seven times, uh, four times by itself like this, and then three times it's connected uh, to another word like Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. Um, so. Uh, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. Now, by the way, that word, that phrase, most high, referring to God, also shows up seven times, seven times in the Bible. So, all referring to God. Seven times seven mentions of most high, seven mentions of Jehovah. Now, if we look in just the New Testament, which, by the way, with Jesus and Christ, um, and we're in Jesus with these two patterns and the golden sequence. They are also only in the New Testament. So um, this one's only, this is not part of the golden sequence, but it is also in the New Testament only. If you look at all mentions of Lord or Lord, 
apostrophe s capitalized or all uppercase which there are a couple all uppercase mentions of lord in the new testament which um translationally it's it's complete anomaly it wasn't even there in 1611 uh, i go into that in other videos in 1629 they put it in in a couple different verses but lord refers to jehovah when it's all uppercase and the way that this settled so perfectly into the bible it's 686 mentions of Lord in the New Testament, which is seven times seven times seven plus seven times seven times seven. This is one of those examples where you see all uppercase Lord in the New Testament. So the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So it's a reference back to Psalm 110 verse one. Whenever Psalm 110 verse one is, is referenced um, in the New Testament, when it uh, says it out like this, where the Lord said unto my Lord, uh, it always uppercases the first Lord, because uh, that's how it is in Psalm 110, and then it capitalizes only the first letter of the second Lord. I'm pretty sure they did that uh, to distinguish the two. But it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily, it's not like a rule they follow in other places in the New Testament. It's only with this specific verse. Um so anyways, I just point that out. It's a, it's a, an anomaly that creates a ton of different patterns in the way that all the way that it's so perfectly fine-tuned. Okay, so this pattern is about God Almighty. So, God Almighty plus Almighty God in the Old Testament, there are seven mentions of God Almighty and Almighty God. And the first mention of God Almighty. There's one that comes, there's one mention of Almighty God that comes before God Almighty, but the first mention of God Almighty is on the 700, is in the 777th verse of the Bible, Genesis 28 3, which has a whole bunch of significance. That's the blessing, that's the promise of Abraham being passed on to Israel, to Jacob. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things going on in the 777th verse of the Bible, which ends up being fulfilled literally the Ark of the Covenant coming out of the Jordan River as the Israelites cross into the, the Promised Land, which is being promised to Israel in the 777th verse of that. Ark of the Covenant leaving the Jordan River and fully Israel fully crossing over the Jordan River is fulfilled on the 77th verse of Joshua and the 77 times 77th verse of the Bible. Uh, I don't have that on this chart. I'm just throwing that out there. That's on kgvcode.com. You can look it up. Okay, so... God Almighty plus Almighty God was seven times in the Old Testament and also seven times in the New Testament. The first mention of God Almighty in the Old Testament was the 777th verse of the Bible. And the first mention of God Almighty in the New Testament is on verse number 30,777, which is Revelation 4.8, where the, chair, the, the beasts around the throne of God are saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Okay, so God Almighty and Almighty God show up seven times in both Testaments, in each Testament. All right, now we're going to get real quickly into uh, same verse and same chapter logic. So this is very, well, it's not similar. It is identical to what we're doing here, where we saw we're only counting verses where we see both. Both of those words show up in that verse. So on line number one, we have Lord. Line number two, we have God. Both of those words must show up in the same verse for us to count that verse. Okay, so that's the same logic we're going to be doing now. In the entire Bible, when you have either God or Father, so either one, and you have Jesus Christ, complete phrase, Jesus Christ or Son, again, these are all pure mentions, so God or Father and Jesus Christ or Son, there are 70 times 7 mentions when they're in the same verse. Okay, let me um, go over to the other side of this line over here. In the New Testament, God and Son, and again, there's no apostrophe S yes mentions of Son, but God, capital G, God and Son, when they both show up in the same verse in the New Testament, there are exactly 77 verses that mention both. But what's hard to fathom with that one is that when you switch over the logic to same chapter, so this is on the same verse. 
77 verses. When you switch the logic to same chapter, so when you see God or Son in the same chapter, there are 777 mentions of God and Son in those chapters that mention both of them. So are chapters and verses inspired? Go watch the Elton Anomaly. <laughs> um, this, I mean, just stay here if you want because it just keeps going. If you go over here, if we go back over here, I'm going back and forth. God or Father and Son give you 980 mentions in the same chapter. So when you see God or Father and Son in the same chapter, you get 980 mentions, same amount of times that Jesus shows up in the Bible. And I'm going back this way. Um, God or the Father, when you include the word the, that could be a capitalized the or a lowercase the, but Father is talking about God the Father, capital F. God or the Father and Jesus show up 70 times, 7 times in the same verse in the New Testament. Which would also be in the entire Bible, because there are no mentions of Jesus in the Old Testament. So, I mean, just look at those together real quick, if you can. They're kind of spread out, but... God or the Father, or God or Father and Son, 70 times 7 plus 70 times 7 mentions in the same chapter. And then God or the Father and Jesus, 70 times 7 mentions in the same verse. But we do have more. When God shows up in the same chapter as both Father and Jesus, so Father and Jesus must show up in the same chapter as God, there are 70 times 7 mentions of God in all those chapters that mention all of them. Uh, furthermore, uh, God and Jesus or Christ, if you look at all the chapters that mention uh, either God uh, or both God and Jesus or Christ, you get 2,401 mentions, which is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. And then if you look at the, this is just, it gets hard to even think about at this point. And the first, don't worry, we're going we're gonna to get past the section in a second. In the first seven and last seven books of the New Testament, God or Father and Jesus. So when you look at when they're showing up in the same chapter in the first seven books and the last seven books of the New Testament, God or Father show up 70 times 7 plus 7 times 7 times, and Jesus shows up 777 times, both of them together. So case-sensitive Jesus. So that's looking at um, first seven and the last seven books of the New Testament. Okay, um, let's uh, tone it down here and let's, uh, let's simplify things. So the phrase Word of God in the entire Bible shows up 49 times, which is 7 times 7. And of course, Word of God is a title of Jesus Christ, uh, as we see in Revelation 19.13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And capital W, Word, by the way, also shows up seven times in the Bible, seven times in the New Testament. So there's seven times seven mentions of Word of God in the entire Bible, and seven mentions of Word capitalized in the New Testament. And in the last episode, I quickly went over this one, but we'll include it here as well. In the Gospels, there are 77 mentions of the Father and the Word, and that's when Word is capitalized, referring to Jesus Christ. Whenever you see Word capitalized like that, it's referring directly to Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so now we're uh, going to move upward. So we have a pretty we're building a skyscraper in this episode. Okay, so Father and Son. In the New Testament, pre-wrath, and when I say pre-wrath, I mean in all the New Testament, except for the Apocalypse, there are 70 times 7 mentions of Father, with or without the apostrophe S, and Son. And there are no apostrophe S mentions of Son, once again. So, Every single mention of Father and Son in the New Testament give you 70 times 7 mentions before the Apocalypse, which has a lot of significance because it's in the Apocalypse when Jesus steps off of the right hand of God and, and stands up, and he's no longer seated on the right hand of God. Because remember that prophecy, we were just looking at it. In Psalm 110, verse 1, The Lord said, 
to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. So this is the Father talking to the Son. This happens after the resurrection. Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So once the enemies of God become his footstool, that's when Jesus is no longer sitting. That's when he stands up and he comes on a white horse as the word of God, as we see it's all over here. Okay, so that's pretty interesting because father and son, when it comes to with, with well, 70 times 7, I should say, with complete forgiveness of sins, we're dealing with the New Testament except for the apocalypse. Um, so once you get past the abomination of desolation going into the great tribulation, you're, um, you're not dealing with God the Father and the Son seated together on, to, like, in the, on the same throne anymore, right? Um, it is no longer occupied by the Son, by the, the, by the Lamb, who is coming in wrath at the end of Revelation 6. Okay, so in the entire Bible, though, Father and Son without uh, with the singular mentions, so that's all the way from Genesis to Revelation. I believe the first mentions in Psalms. So from Psalms to Revelation, technically, uh, there are no mentions before Psalms. There are 70 times 7 mentions of Father or Son when they're singular, when they're not including the apostrophe S. Yes. So we, always, we covered this in episode 1. Um, but just to see how, I mean, just look at how that stacks on top of all these other 70 times 7 patterns that exist, especially with, especially with the same chapter and the same verse patterns. I mean, there's so many, there's so much overlap that my mind cannot bend itself around and through all those different ways that it's, it's, it's navigating to create all that perfection. Okay, so here's where we're going to start really building quickly. Okay, so we're actually almost done. In the entire Bible, sorry, I'm showing two at once. I'll go over one at a time. In the entire Bible... There are 777 times 7 mentions, so 5,439, of God, Son of God, and Jesus. So basically, that God, um, it, it directly, so basically whenever you see Son connected to God, when it says Son of God, uh, you're counting that mention of Son. And then, so basically all mentions of God, Son of God, and Jesus, 777 times 7 times. We actually showed that in one of the episodes in the extra notes. And this one we saw in the last episode in the Godhead, where we have God, Father, Jesus, and Holy Ghost showing up 777 times seven times. And the reason I'm stacking all this up together is so you can see how often God and Father and Jesus are showing up throughout all these patterns, all these perfect equations in the Bible with God's perfect number. Okay, so next one we, was the... This was the finale pattern of all the, the Jesus Christ episodes where Jesus combined with all the uppercase mentions of God produce 7,777 mentions. So that's every single time you see the fully uppercase Lord, God, Jehovah, I am, Jah, and then all the fully uppercase uh, names of Jesus, branch and king. So all of that together with, with Jesus himself, which his name also shows up fully uppercase six different times. Um, so all of that, with the name of Jesus, all in it mentions of Jesus, the 980 count, gives you 7,777 mentions. Okay? Now the reason I point that out, first of all, I need to remind you of this one as well. So this one with the 7,777 is including the mentions of Jesus with the apostrophe, the possessive mentions. But if you were just to look at um, the singular mentions of Jesus without the apostrophe, there would be 970 mentions. 970 times 7 is how many times God, Lord, Jehovah, I am, and Josh show up. So all the mentions of, uh, of these five, so Lord, God, Jehovah, I am, Jah, show up 970 times 7 times, and those are all singular. The reason I'm showing that is because there's a sequence that happens. Um, watch what happens when we substitute. Who, what is the Father's most used title in the New Testament? It's God. God the Father. Watch what happens when we substitute God for all pure mentions of Father and we look at 
all the mentions of, of with or without possessive, so lord or lords. Father, all pure mentions, plus Lord, plus Jehovah, plus I am, plus Jah, produces 980 times seven mentions. That's how many times Jesus, his name shows up in the Bible. And it's literally the same thing. We're just substituting um, Father for God. And, we're, and I believe the sh Lord here should also have an asterisk. Um, let me go to the next one here. Yeah, I do have it in this one. So this is just to show you. Uh, it's the same thing, but it's to show you the connection. Jesus showing up 980 times in all forms. Pure mentions. Father, Lord, all uppercase, Jehovah, I am, Jah, all uppercase, 980 times 7. But if that's not enough, if you just look up God and Father, God and Father show up 625 times 7 times. 625. What could that possibly, what could the significance possibly be with that? If you're familiar with the King James Bible, you will probably know right off the bat. You'll probably know immediately. But if you're not, 625 is how many times Jesus shows up in the Gospels. So 625 is 25 times 25, or 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. That's how many times Jesus shows up in the Gospels. So when we were looking in all of these patterns with Jesus in the Gospels, like right here, that's a 625 count. And uh, this one as well, that's a 625 count. Those 625 mentions of Jesus up here. Um, so 625 times 7 is how many times God, so capitalized mentions of God and Father, show up in the entire Bible. Jesus said, believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Referring to the miracles that are being per performed by him through the Father. So, so wait a second. <laughs> that, the, both of these are directly connected because you're dealing with Father in both of them. It's a double like Venn diagram I have going on where Father is in the middle, 272 mentions of Father or Fathers, when we go to the left side, all mentions of God or gods, you get 625 times 7 mentions of God plus Father. God the Father. 625 is how many times Jesus shows up in the Gospels. But when you combine Father with all the uppercase mentions of God, besides God, you get Lord Jehovah I am Jah, you get 980 times 7 mentions of a Father at all the uppercase mentions. So that's how many times Jesus shows up in the Bible. So we have um, 625 times 7 mentions and 980 times 7 mentions, both dealing with Father. Okay, so we are at the second to last now. When you look up all the mentions of God and Father and Jesus and Christ, you get 5,903 mentions, which is the 777th prime number. God Father, Jesus Christ. Now this is with the singular mentions of God, and all the rest of them include, uh, so Father, Father, Jesus, or Jesus, Christ, or Christ, or Christians. or Christians. So this is the 777 plus 777 count with all mentions of God and Father. Give you the 777th prime. But now we're going to look at the third and final pattern of the golden sequence. Let me zoom out for this. It's actually very, 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 very similar to this pattern right here. All we're going to do, I'll tell you before I open it, all we're going to do is add the asterisk to God. So all the capitalized mentions of God. So we're gonna, it's going to be consistent across the board. And watch what happens. God plus Father, plus Jesus, plus Christ, produces 77 times 77 mentions in the entire Bible. That is a combination of God and Father producing 625 times 7 mentions by themselves as his own pattern, 
and Jesus and Christ producing 777 plus 777 mentions. When you combine God, God and Father, Jesus and Christ in the Bible, in the most printed Bible in history, you get 5,929 mentions, which is 77 times 77. So, let's go back down. Jesus by himself, 7 times 7 plus 7 times 7 mentions, 1. Jesus plus Christ, 777 plus 777 mentions, 2. Jesus plus Christ plus God plus Father, 77 times 77 mentions. I am calling that the golden sequence for a reason. That's not even a a good enough name for it. I mean, this is a trilogy of perfection. Like, I have never I have never seen before. I didn't know about this last pattern until a brother just sent it to me. He actually sent, like, a variation of it um, without, like, the psalm superscriptions. And it was, like, raw. And then I realized it's pure if you include, like, the if you get rid of the anti-mentions, including everything, including the psalm superscriptions. So, one two, three, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, God the Father, gives you perfect every single time in the most astonishing way you can ever imagine. Like, nothing is higher. This is the most elevated view of the Lord that you can possibly get in the Bible. This is the most simple way you can get it. Like, I'm, I shouldn't be trying to get too excited. I'm not trying to win you over or convince you by emotions. I'm just, myself, I am astonished at this. I just, I looked at this for so long, like, what is happening here? How does any person see this and think that this is some sort of broken version of the Word of God compared to what we used to have? Well, yeah, the Word of God was pure in the original languages, but God preserved it. He preserved it into the most spoken language in the history of the world, in the most read Bible in the history of the world. In, in ways that you overlap with each other in so many different paths and back alleys, and I don't know, I don't know how to even describe this. Like, there's no words of how all of this could possibly happen in one book. There's just zero possible chance this was random. I have looked for patterns in other versions, like the ESV and the NIV, and I detail those in my book, Sealed by the King. I compare all the major patterns, which a lot of them weren't even discovered yet in that one, when I wrote that book, but these two were, Jesus Christ and Jesus. And 95% of the time, or more, the modern versions did not match, and they were usually way off usually very different from each other, even with when it comes to the name of Jesus, how many times he shows up in the Bible, modern versions were not even close most of the time. Like this, I, I went looking in those Bibles for patterns. I did not see anything significant. I, I came across a couple of anomalies every now and then, but to this magnitude, they're not even close. No way, <laughs> not even close. And I spent a good amount of time doing it. I have the verses up here, Job 40, verses 2 and verse 9. Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? See, lots of people, so many people in, in the body of Christ today, unfortunately, are brothers and sisters, they are taught that the Word of God was only perfect in Hebrew and Greek, and everything after that is lost in translation and is imperfect. It's, it's close, but it's imperfect, and you need to know the original languages to understand the Bible perfectly. 
that goes against the Bible. That goes against what God has spoken himself, that he is going to preserve his word forever. That there is a book in the end times, in Isaiah 34, verse 16, that everybody in the earth is going to be able to seek out of that book and read. We're dealing with a Bible that has covered the earth. Billions of copies of the King James Bible have been printed. Not even a fraction of that has been printed in Hebrew and Greek, combined into one book. By the way, I'm not 100% saying this is, this is what I'm thinking it is, but what I'm thinking it is, Malachi 1.11 do your own prayer and diligence and study on this. For from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, this is God speaking, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. He's talking to Israel in Malachi. And in chapter 2, he starts talking to the Levites about his law. You go read that chapter, I don't know. It talks about uh, how they've polluted his bread. And we know that God often uses bread as a type of his word. But his response to that polluted bread, for the, from the rising of the sun even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Is that what we're seeing right here? Because it looks like it to me. And obviously his name is great by what Jesus has done on the cross. This is simply the testimony, the proof, the what God has given to us. Because without the Bible, we wouldn't know anything about Jesus Christ or what he did for us. Maybe we, we it's a folk tale. Like we, we hear it and we say, oh, that'd be, that'd be cool. But how are we supposed to put our foot down anywhere to believe something? But God has given us the scriptures for that very reason, so that throughout all generations of the earth, we would have his word. We would be able to go back and see what he has done for us and how to come to him. And he can come to us. It is he, it's the Lord that reaches out to us through the word. So the Bible is so much more important than most Christians think today. It's, there's such a low view of the scriptures today. But when you look at it from God's perspective, this is how he talks to us. This is how he directs our paths. This is how he sanctifies us. This is how he saves us. Would it not make sense that he proves it? Using nothing but his own book. Because God, who knows every single thought in all of our minds also knew every single word that his Bible would be translated into in all the different languages before it was ever being written. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. I believe what we have seen in this, in, in this macro pattern series is verifiable, 100% proof. There, there is no searching of his understanding. Who knows what else we've missed that God has perfectly put into that book. But I mean... He's revealed it to us now. And I am certainly not worthy to be the one who is sharing this. Like, it's not my information. This is God. So if you want to share with other people, don't even use my name or my face or anything. Just show them this. Show them how perfect God's word is. If you are a wandering sheep, if you are lost, if you are dead in your sins, if you have never came to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, for everlasting life that he gives unto his sheep. Maybe today he'll find you. All you need to do is nothing. Is you can't do anything with your own hands. 
You cannot work your way to God. You're covered in sin, but what happens is when you believe on Jesus Christ, when you come to Him and ask Him to save you, Jesus Christ paid for all your sins with His perfect blood because He had no sin. He knew no sin. He was sinless. You see, what was amazing about all this is that you can show this to anybody and you can, you can look at it yourself and say, okay, so that means what the Bible said is really true. Everything. So when you start reading the words, you realize this really happened. Jesus was really here, really born of a virgin, really did all those miracles. He really walked on the water. He really broke the loaves and fed 5,000 and then 4,000. He really healed the lepers. He opened the eyes of the blind. He really died on the cross without sin. God manifests in the flesh, the Word of God, died on the cross for the whole world, gave himself for you, for me, because God loved us while we were yet sinners. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's almost like a father taking his son to, to a prison house and offering his son to be crucified by those prisoners who are all guilty, who are all criminals, giving his son over to them to be tortured and humiliated so that all of them could be made free if they simply believe on him when he comes up out of that prison house. <clears throat> could you imagine having to give your son over for a bunch of criminals to die for them when they have done nothing to deserve your son? We have done nothing to deserve Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. Yet he gave himself for us. He gave everything that he was and everything that he is for you and me. So that we might have life and have it more abundantly and live in the presence of God forever. And holy perfection, no more crying, no more weeping, no more tears, no more pain, for the former things are passed away. All of that is just, it's, it's ahead of all of us who have believed on Jesus. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and drink from the living waters if you have not done so. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from your sins. He is the Savior. He is the Good Shepherd. And He will take you by the hand and pull you up out of the darkness and into the light. Thanks for watching Macro Patterns Episode 7. Thanks for watching the Macro Pattern series. And feel free to leave a comment. I hope this has been a blessing to you. And that's all we have. God bless.